Benji. If you have not checked us out in our past episodes, they are up on Spotify, Anchor, and YouTube. And be sure to check out our Instagram at The Merch Podcast. We hope you enjoy. Yes, welcome back. Uh, episode 8. Mm-hmm. Can you believe we're here? No. Fantastic. And uh, we are still uh, father-daughter. Mm-hmm. I think we've removed all vicious rumors online so we can move past that finally i think there's one guy maybe still hanging on yeah um and so today's episode is an interesting one yeah yeah we're going back to nature yeah we're going we're going back to odd news common theme odd news maybe unfortunate news uh from japan but um what did uh you know what did we want to update maybe some folks from the previous episode what have we found out and also wanted to give a shout out myself, but what did you find out? Well, we talked about our favorite book, Where the Crawdads Sings, I think like two times in our past episodes. And we talked about a movie coming out this summer, and I just saw an update. Taylor Swift is the main artist coming out with the music for this movie. So, oh no! Um, are, we, are we excited or not? Personally, I'm not a fan of Taylor Swift, so... I don't know if I'm going to like this movie and it's making me sad because I really enjoy the book. We already were anticipating that the movie wasn't going to be as good as the book, although there were debates Mm -hmm. in one of our uh, podcasts about that. Um, Listen, I I was telling you before we started, she branched out and did a completely folklore pandemic album that which was well it. received but no, it wasn't. I didn't buy it I didn't listen to it so yeah, but if she's right. able to connect with the spirit of the book then I can't hate immediately I'm gonna I'm gonna I wait. mean I listened to the preview and it's, we gotta wait it's wait not for giving it. yeah it's not giving but it's okay so we'll good side it. note on that and uh you know uh, in episode one and just before we we start uh, episode eight I wanted to big up Ransom uh Ransom uh if you're out there and you're listening uh, no Rest for the Wicked, a hip-hop album. Eventually, I'm going to make an episode entirely on hip-hop. You know how yes. your dad is yes. slightly obsessed and similar to the AHA episode. Uh, but Ransom, in terms of lyricism, the production, Nicholas Craven and all the others, there's too many to mention. Um, fantastic, fantastic album if you're a hip-hop head. Mm-hmm. But let's move to uh, episode uh, eight, In Crane, in the Japanese Membrane. I love I that title. That name. I did. Um, so let's talk about, you know, in episode one, we, we kind of introduced folks to yeah. Florida to Our otters. the otters, the ecosystem that, uh, that we live on. Yeah. And we've had some developments. We have. We have some exciting developments. Bring me some updates. Some updates. So, so tell us about those developments and let's get into it. Right. So we have cranes. I think we mentioned that in the first episode, but we never really went into it. Originally... I remember when we moved here, we had four cranes. They were adults. I don't know if they were family. I don't know if they were just besties. We don't know. But BFFs for sure. BFFs for life. And um, they were obviously very attracted to our yard because generally they like to nest and mate in marsh areas. And we have a huge lake in our backyard, which Mm -hmm. makes sense for them. So, and they like to sleep in the water they'll like stand in shallow water and our lake is shallow which makes sense so ideal so, setting for yeah, these animals very right? ideal setting so uh, recently we've had babies and nice. so two out of the four have stayed we don't know where the other two went God yes. bless them. we hope that they're okay they took an uber and left <laughs> they i don't know where they went honestly i don't know where they went but um We have babies. We have two new babies. And we've become very protective of these babies. Super protective. Very protective of these babies. We'll go into that later. But um, they're, I think, honestly, I think one is a female and I think one is a male. There is debate amongst the family as to what gender these Mm -hmm. these are. But I think one is a female, one is a male. Because one is more orangey, which is what the female looks like. The mother is more orangey and she's more skinny. And then the male, he's very gray and he's heavier and he has this, this red neck to him and the baby's just one of them looks really orange and one of them just looks really gray so i'm just i'm debating they're growing up a little too quick because i saw them on the road they're like hitchhiking i don't know what's going on Mm -hmm. and they're starting to look slightly delicious to me like but that's good that's normal you know cranes 
Baby cranes grow up to one inch per day, so they grow very fast and they stay with the parents for like nine to 10 months. So by the time that they leave the parents, they're practically adults. They grow five feet in three months. So That's massive. yeah, and it's been like, I think two weeks since it was brought to my attention that the babies were a big deal on our yard and mm -hmm. they, I can just see the development like day by day and it's, um, yeah, we're, fi we're finally really starting beautiful. to see those little wings come yeah, up, yeah. Uh, which are those majestic wings that they use to, mm -hmm. to glide into the water, glide into the, the little island, and, and it was actually cute to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we can call them babies anymore, I mean, because I mean, maybe know. they're teenagers, they're slightly... Uh, yeah, they're a little they, bit independent, but they're, they're still, they're still, they're still getting rebellious, parents. A little personality here yeah, and there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, we have sandhill cranes, and... That's like the most common type of crane in the U.S. when I looked it up. The rarest type of crane is a whooping crane, and they're more based in the north of the U.S. So and like borderline Canada. So don't really and those those them. and those tend to be in the colder weather. They tend to be more migratory yeah. than resident. We we've got more permanent resident. residents, permanent. Well, clearly cards. they're residents since they've been here. They're not the leaving this 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 yeah. acreage. Yes, and, and marsh. Then, funny enough, we have. Cuban cranes. Sadly, they are extinct. That's they very were sad. based in Cuba. And apparently they were really aggressive because when I looked them up on Google, the pictures of the Cuban crane, it, they they were attacking like other animals. I was like, definitely a Cuban crane since they're like attacking so other they, animals. They, maybe, like really maybe aggressive. The, maybe the Cuban crane was, you know, hopped up on, on espresso and sugar, had some flan, one that just maybe got into a jealousy type fit and <laughs> Yes, it's like someone, a Miami someone news found out some episode, and someone started someone started a fight. But right. yeah, so shout out to the Cuban cranes, RIP. We hope they're beautiful. Doing well. So Florida sandhill cranes is what we have here. We've established that there's others from other regions. Mm -hmm. they're, they're 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 residential, yeah, <laughs> you know? and uh, of course they haven't. They don't pay rent, unfortunately. They help. definitely do not, especially with that seduction dance. They better pay rent. Right? That's kind so of what, scary. So what, what, what is that seduction dance? Gonna yeah, be? so when cranes mate, they have this little seduction dance. It's actually really funny. We kind of guessed it on the first like time that we saw. We were like, either they're playing a game or they're flirting. And you actually called it. I think you were the one who said they were flirting. And I was the one who said they were playing they a were game. They were playing but, a game, yeah. So basically... Either there's like a leaf on the floor or there's a stick or something. The male will poke at the stick and then he'll start jumping up and down and like spreading his wings and all the way because he's not trying to like play all his cards on the first day, you know? Right. But he's just like opening them a little bit, like showing that he's like strong and they'll just start hopping. Like I just, we can't take it seriously though because he's just like... Yeah, I unfortunately cannot take... I, 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 he looks goofy, but I, apparently it works because they have kids now. Yeah, I tried to imitate it for, for my in-laws <laughs> and also for the family. It just, uh, I, I'm gonna break the microphone if I do it, but it's just kind of this puffing up yeah. and then kind of bouncing. And then you see their little legs, like, they jump and then they're like, energy. They're like, yeah, so that's their little seduction dance, but usually they mate early spring and this was last time I saw them do one of those was like maybe in December right and that, that more started when like we first moved here which was in last summer so yeah you know they were all four of them were actually doing that little seduction dance or whatever but it, it only it only works between those two I guess because we, we, we have to find uh, some sort of artist to write a crane dance yeah so. yeah so the babies actually happen pretty fast their whole process is like within 24 hours, they're up and running. And baby cranes are called crane poults, and they get the name because they can literally get up and run from the egg. So si similar to kind of maybe animals in the wild, like elephants, giraffes, you see them just plop out of their mom's and uh, like, uterus, and they they get yeah. licked, and then they hey follow the herd. Yeah. A similar vibe. Yeah, right? it's kind of the survival of the fittest. Like I'll help you out, but like you're on your own a little yeah. bit. But the babies, the parents feed them for the first 10 days, and then the parents kind of show them how to feed themselves, and then at one point they just learn to feed themselves. Well, that's what we've and been mostly seeing. We've mostly I been think. seeing that on the campus where um, they're inseparable. They uh, have been, f uh, the, the mom and the dad have been 
you know, pecking at the ground to get the, either the sandworms or whatever there is, mm -hmm. feeding the kids, so they're yeah. showing up to the beak. But I've noticed recently that the children are now fully bit. and completely. They're still walking around with, with the parents, but I just watched them and the babies are picking at their own little section of mud and figuring out what they eat. And they eat like insects, earthworms, seeds, snakes, rodents. And get this, they eat birds. Yeah. Cranes eat birds. So basically, they're cannibals. They're no. freaks. It, well, listen, there's, like, there's a lot of animals that eat other animals. That's weird. There's like, even large fish, they eat the big fish. Uh, why Why not? And you can't judge them on that. And They're then, hungry. Like, they need you, to survive. But, okay, well, yeah. But that's, that's basically it. And then they just tell them when they need to go mate. At the point when they reach adulthood, the parents are like, leave. Go have sex. Go have your kids. So basically, not like an Italian family where the kid stays home until 38. No. Uh, they, they, no, no. The parents raise these kids and they want them to be as independent as possible. You need to go vote. Here's your social security. <laughs> Here's your credit card. Get out of here. Bye. Bye. So yeah. What? So so that's a bit sad to me because I've I've, I've grown very attached and I think the rest of the family has. What's going to happen when this separation occurs? Well, they usually the babies they'll go meet up with other babies or they'll go to mating grounds and they'll see if they can find someone there but usually that's where they fly to like that's the first place they stop at they need to find a mating ground or a nesting place and then they kind of just start from there and they branch out to go find their um, one and only love which isn't their one and only love because if one of the cranes die they go and remarry which is like well that's only fair you want to you don't want to Right. You, don't, you don't want to disparage that if, if they if they chose their mate and that mate passes away and they still have the capability of loving and creating why if wouldn't they, are, they do it human they beings are, do it too so you, you you make it sound like <laughs> as if you're passing judgment on, on this animal it's not fair well like they don't even grieve like they just go and they find someone else. well like, you know what in a it looks like based on everything you're telling me a crane's life is short it's even shorter than a yeah. human's life but but Let's life. let let's talk about also the dangers that these these animals face, oh. even in more yeah. serene or protected, peaceful environments like this property, this lake. Let's talk about where not only what we've seen, what I've seen, but also what uh, we've heard and uh, and abuela and abuela have witnessed. Tell us a, a little bit about uh, the, the the protective side. Get this story. So, this is like, I come home from school, and then my mom's like, oh my god. And I'm like, oh, what happened? And she's like, the otters are back, and they're better than ever. And I was like, oh no. And mm. like, I already knew when Love she the mentioned otters. the otters, I was like, what the... We warned you. We warned but everybody. Dude, Nobody wants to listen to bad. us. bad. So, apparently, the baby cranes, we have this little island. We like to call it Voldemort's Island, Voldemort's in the middle Island. of our lake. And the, the crane family was there, and apparently the otters, the three of them, ran up from the stream that is next to our house. We have a little river, and then there's our lake. So they ran up from that little stream, and they stood on our deck, like waiting to stalking, a, like waiting to attack the babies. Like genuinely, they had it out for them. I so don't it was know why. It was like an otter crane Mexican standoff. Yes, it was like, and the crane family they didn't know what to do, so they were just standing on that island. But apparently, Abuelo was standing out there with a bat for like <laughs> hours, ready to fight some otters if he had to protect that crane family. We were ready so, to fight the so, otters. So what? I, so family. what I heard is that Abuelo was out there close to an hour. His dinner got cold. Um, uh, you know, he likes the, 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 his food at room temperature, but maybe not as cold as that. Yeah. And that's how long he was dedicated to yeah. protecting uh, these babies. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's one story. And then the story that 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 I saw while I was working mm -hmm. through the window, um, uh, I'm calling him uh, Bruce Willis, aka Hudson Hawk. Uh, shout out to the '80s. Um, there's a hawk who kills squirrels, rats, he's all around, he's flying all the time, just surveying, he's like a permanent drone. Mm -hmm. Except, he, you know, it's not it's not sponsored by the government. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, this this guy came down, and sim yeah, and in that hawk position, he looked like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix, you know, when he gets up yeah, in that yeah, crane yeah, position, yeah, yeah. Yes. you know? 
and, and, and he was trying to get at the baby and the mom like, what? you know, with her beak was like pushing him away. It was, I, I and unfortunately I wasn't on a call, but I just wish I'd, I'd been able to take a slow-mo video of it because it was impressive, not only the aggression, but also the protection. No, but that makes so much sense because back to the Cuban crane, one of the pictures was a picture of a crane trying to like hit their beak at a hawk. That was like, I, I saw a picture of that. I can look it up again and post it on my Instagram, but I swear to God, it was a picture of a hawk. So then, are you, sure, are you sure that the, the, the father crane that I saw protecting his, his family is not uh, uh, maybe a migratory Cuban he who is came a refugee. here? He's, da he, he's adapted. You know what he is? He's a mestizo. He's a mix, <laughs> he's a mix. of the Cuban and the regular crane. <laughs> well, I like, here he is. I like he's him already. He's a refugee. I love him already because he protected his family. Yes. And, uh, and we feel protective of them. What else do you want to say as we, uh, we exit you know, this segment um, on these cranes? Yeah, I mean, I don't have really anything else except for that they're really beautiful and I'm glad that they add to our environment. I mean, every time I walk home from school, I just see them, I'm like, you're here again. And at this point, I think they've acknowledged that they're like living with us because they like let us come, they let me come closer to them than they like usually did. Yes. Sometimes the dad will look at me and he'll just be like, yeah, he, he, and then he'll turn the other way and he'll they have me. they have become they're, a little more accepting they're definitely comfortable with us and sometimes they piss us off because they'll stand in the middle of the road when we're trying to like drive and we're like what are you doing like we're trying to leave and they take their time but they are very beautiful we love them and we wish the best to those baby cranes beautiful so that's that's what you know the, the, this this florida uh, sand hill crane we've established these other cranes around the world um, different regions, uh, they're either resident or migratory, and obviously fascinating life as we're trying, seeing these babies evolve and hopefully survive uh, from Bruce Willis attacks and especially those bloody otters. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, your dad likes to over-intellectualize things, try to understand and get to the bottom. As usual, with, with, with these animals, I, I went looking and trying to understand, have we written about cranes before? How, how do crane play within our, our fables, our mythology, etc. So of course, Asia. Oh. Well, there's also Greece, but first let me talk about Asia. So the, the crane mythology and folklore in the Chinese culture, just similar to the Japanese, uh, they're a symbol of longevity. Mm. Lasting, you know, a, a long, eternal, kind of peaceful uh, animals. Mm -hmm. They're a divine bird that travels between heaven and man's world. So sometimes carrying the souls of the deceased to heaven. Oh. That's beautiful, right? Okay. And so there's also legends that they come in four colors, white, black, yellow, and blue. There is a blue crane. Yes. That is a species. So, so, so this, they remind me of like a college brochure where you've got the Asian, the black, the African-American, the white, and then somebody you just can't figure out what race he is. <laughs> yeah. Like every single like yeah, soap yeah. commercial now, you're like, I don't know if he's Indian, Pakistani, mixed with black, uh, dad might be Irish, he's got yeah, yeah, freckles. Yeah. Um, so that, that was interesting. They've been featured in funeral materials. And also, guess what? In 500 BC, there was actually a dance called the Dance of the White Crane. So here it goes. What we saw in the garden uh, maybe has played out in, the, in, in the folklore. Mm -hmm. uh, to finish off on the Chinese theme, there's one of the eight immortals Unfortunate name is a Lu Dong Bin. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not inventing it. <laughs> Lu Dong Bin, he was drinking in a wine shop, okay, mm -hmm. and he did not have money. So instead of paying, he drew two dancing cranes on the walls of the inn, mm -hmm. and so it attracted many customers just to see the art. But this is the beauty of the story: is that when the debt was paid they detached from the wall and flew away. Aww. Yeah, kind of nice, right? Kind of cute, yeah. Not only cute, but also at the same time, stop looking for money all the time. Right. 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 I'm sure that's how they said it also when they flew away. <laughs> so on the, on the uh, Aesop, so on the Greek side, there's a beautiful fable called the wolf and the crane. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you heard about it. So let me, and it's actually a sculpture in Berlin's Traktower Park uh, that was done in 1968. So the stories, uh, you know, won't go into too much detail, but the story is that there was a wolf that uh, swallowed a, a bone or had a bone stuck in his throat, the wolf, right? 
and he asked all the animals to help him out. He's like, I'm going to die. Please perform some sort of Heimlich maneuver or help right. me. And the problem is the only one uh, that could solve the issue was a crane. Why? Because of its long beak. So the wolf opens its mouth, the crane goes in, mm -hmm. removes the bone, and the wolf is safe. So, typical, some sort of compensation, maybe a bloody hug, I don't know, something. Yeah. And after that, the wolf tells the, the crane, you have put your head inside a wolf's mouth and taking it out again in safety. That ought to be reward enough for you. So this is an interesting fable because it has been used in Jewish Midrash version, in Buddhist scriptures, they've changed the animals like tiger, I think, with right. the, the peacock. Uh, Jean de La Fontaine, who's written a lot of uh, French fables, he also used it too. Mm -hmm. And then on the, on the Jewish side, they used more, uh, it, was, it had political overtones. Because think about it this way, if I'm either the government, the authoritative figure, the oppressor, the dictator, the wolf, right? Something happens to me and I require the help of the population or something, then it's like, well, you help me out, fantastic. You get a reward. But uh, uh, don't, it's, it's reward enough that you're still alive. Right. Right? And so, by the way, I'm going to challenge you now. Where have you seen this play out in, a, and I'm going to help you out, in a 1990s very popular movie, not only in this family, that should be enough clues, um, where you see this play out? No? I'm thinking back to our movie episode. I'm um, no no, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another clue. We talked about Hudson Hawk and Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is in this movie. The fifth element? The fifth element, yes. What scene where the wolf is choking on something and he's helped out by the priest? Oh, where um Gary Oldman is choking on a cherry yep. that he drank from his drink and the priest like hits him, hits like him he's like letting him die and correct. then he hits him on the back and he lets him out and, and he lets him the out priest walks away. and it's a bit the same situation because guess what he does save him and but what does Gary Oldman's character say to him he goes you know I, because you saved me I'm sparing your life right so this very interesting that this wolf and the crane situation has been repeated in many cultures so I right. thought that was a, a really nice segment especially mm -hmm. that you like so uh I wanted to move on to Japan because, ja but not odd news. Let me finish with the crane. Uh, Japanese culture is also filled with cranes. There's also origami, the folding of paper that's attached to it, and we'll talk about that. So, for, for example, in the Kyoto Museum of Art, there is actually a 14 meters. I forgot to look at the yards translation for my, for my uh, and also uh, feet translation. But it celebrates the friendship of two artists, one who was a calligrapher, one who was the, the artist, and, and the effervescent energy of the cranes. So it's a really beautiful, and it, was, it dates from the 17th century. In Japan, the crane that was popular is the red crown crane. And at one point, they faced the extinction. There was only like 20 birds in 1920. And that's very low. Oh. But what was nice is that due to the efforts of the Wild Bird Society of Japan, their population increased to about 1,500 average per year. And there was like recovery of the Hokkaido marshes, mm -hmm. uh, the Kushiro National Park. They created feeding centers for these birds. Um, so, you know, there was a crane population. Go so Japan. Go Japan and, and go saving the cranes. But this is the unintended consequences of doing this. Oh, no. We know they're resident and migratory. Mm -hmm. So apparently they were supposed to leave and, and do some, you know. Don't tell me they didn't leave. So they didn't leave, why? One, they started inbreeding. <laughs> so they were like, Colonia Tovar in, 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 in Venezuela or some sort of weird uh, uh, southern episode. Um, they became reliant on humans for their food. And I'm calling this crane socialism because, what, but follow me. They became so reliant on human food and, and, and free handouts, right? that they started pecking at the window. Oh God. And they're like, yo, what's up? Where's my food? And they also Bro. started stealing grain that was meant for the livestock. What? So we warned you about this. 
these are beautiful creatures again but put in the wrong circumstances yeah they can become right. animalistic they can become aggressive yeah. I, I love the image of like them hanging out by the door and pecking that's like, funny but the stealing is worse so i think that crane needs to be punished oh right oh my god so and then finally on the origami side um, there's a tradition in Japanese culture where you fold a thousand cranes mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a Confucian belief that it brings longevity, peace, happiness and, and good fortune, yes, right? Do it at school. I think it's called Sensaburo, uh, is the, the folding of a thousand cranes. And, and, it, and it brought me back, I remembered a book that I read in Australia. I read a book about a girl folding a thousand cranes and she was like dying from cancer. And I remember I was crying, it was like fifth grade. And well, like, you didn't make it very sad. I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> she folded a thousand cranes, that bitch still died. No. I was like, what? No. Yes, she did. No, let me explain to you what yes, happened. She did. No, that's not uh, the did fact. Did you read a different book? Uh, Sadako Sasaki uh, was a, a nuclear uh, bomb survivor. She was a cancer patient, and one girl came to her and said, if you fold a thousand cranes... Oh, yeah, this is the same story. Yeah, she only made it to 644 cranes. Oh. Yeah, so you were, you were wrong on that. Okay, well, I read this in so, the fifth grade. I don't I know. remember. So, but, but, but that's a popular... Uh, so you, you see that a lot in, in Chinese culture every single year. I this got book. really sad, really quick. Well, yes, well, that's why. I mean, you completely kill my sadness there, but I'm glad I didn't cry on camera because she only made it to 644. <laughs> so... We're in Japan right now, and I wanted to conclude um, as we approach the end of this uh, episode with, you know, our most popular segment, shall odd we news. call it, odd and unfortunate news, and we're, we're staying in Japan. Yeah, oh, of course Okay, so, 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 Camille, I've got two... I haven't heard these yet. Well, maybe three. Yeah. I, got, I got three, let's say, juicy ones for you. Okay. Okay, one related to technology, as we know, with the Japanese, they're advanced, and another one related to just putting your beef bowl in your mouth or your foot in your mouth so <laughs> in unfortunate news the um uh, japanese fast food chain oh god they fired their official so probably the ceo over okay. sexist comments um the the company is called yoshino ya beef bowls and their their official during a university lecture check this out this is oh, really? precious he said we need to get virgins addicted to our beef bowl and foods because when they marry, they're going to get spoiled and go somewhere else. <laughs> and so after those comments, there was major outrage, as you can tell from your face. And so he was fired. So oh my God. that's why I'm calling it putting your beef bowl in that's your mouth. That's funny though. So, um, but by the way, those are echoes of two things. One, at the Tokyo Olympics, Yoshiro Mori, who was uh, kind of in charge of the organization, uh, he was fired too, uh, because he said that uh, women speak too much. <laughs> so thank you. I just love that. Whatever his name is. You know what? It, I know the misogynistic side is part of the culture. Yeah. We we love the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. There's some wonderful things about them, but this these are just unfortunate. They're unfortunate, right? Yeah, it's just in their history. They, yes. And then uh, we're watching a show, maybe we'll do a review called Tokyo Vice right now, and uh, you see the treatment of women and, and what they have to go through. It's oh, unfortunate, good. but just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. And then finally, to conclude today, um, this is the title of the, uh, of the article, and this is real shit, I'm not inventing it. Japanese fictosexual, between quotes, man who married a hologram <laughs> says his wife is no longer talking to him <laughs> that's the title um so what is she's a, glitching yeah, yeah well yeah the, the, wait wait for it. so what is a fictosexual you think i mean a it, fake ficto well i'm thinking ficto, ficto is, is fiction. fiction yes so, so like somebody fake, who is up. obsessed or with a fictional character okay so this guy akihi i uh, know sorry akihi ki kondo k-o-n-d-o he married a hologram character named Hatsune Miko, and he even um, created a lifestyle version of her. He married her. The family didn't come to the wedding. I wouldn't either. And you, if you go to Twitter or to Instagram and, and look up Mr. Kondo, Akihiki Kondo, you will see that he's next to his bride. This is real. This is real. This is no joke. No. But this is the best part, and I may, maybe Abuelo will appreciate this from an, the engineering standpoint. His wife no longer talks to him because the company <laughs> that invented oh God. The, 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 this character 
stop supporting the software that allows her to speak. I'm done. I'm done. A Japanese guy? I, I can't. I don't know what to say anymore about these guys. Well, Camila, help me out. I don't know, dude. This How can we help? Weird. Because we, we, told them, we told them, please come back to reality. Please come back to us. It's not. They're not coming back. What? How do you even have sex with that? What, what that's it, 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 he looks like a normal person, by the way. No, he does. he's not normal. He's not normal if he's married hologram. Sure, he's not normal. We, we know these like kids, what? like, they, they become obsessed. They have these little holograms when they get home. They think it's like a girlfriend or wife. But I don't know, I don't know what to say. Do they need to go to Cuba and hang out with the Cuban Probably. crane? Sorry, it's extinct, but do they, they need to go to Cuba, right? Probably. Something. Like the Shake up your life. Get on a bloody plane. Just, just leave. <laughs> like, I, I want you to go touch a person, a real person. <laughs> go kill yourself. Go it's have a Cuban thing. coffee, have some fun. I don't, come to Miami. Yeah. Come to Miami. Just do something with your life, maybe not marry a hologram. No, and, and you know, my, my, my old colleague, he laughed when I, when I mentioned that um, sometimes you go to these salsa clubs and you see the four foot nine Japanese guy who's got the be better moves, but he studied it like perfectly. That's a perfect example. That's fine. Go I'm adopt. Okay with that. Go Come adopt on. another culture. Yes. Like I, I want you to survive. <laughs> or come and watch the baby cranes with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't marry holograms don't and don't do don't be a fictosexual do people, please. The the, the world. There's plenty of fish in the sea, like yes. in the lake. Yes. There's a plenty of beautiful women all around the culture. Like me. Real women who need conversation, not a fucking computer program, and especially not a doll. Yeah. But that's it. I just want it's to a end. Note from me. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end on this note. Camina, yes. can you remind folks where they can see us? Yeah, you can go check us out on Instagram at Submerge Podcast and all of our other episodes on Spotify, Anchor, and YouTube. YouTube is at Submerge Podcast TV. Thank you for tuning in. We love you. Thank you for the support, and especially for the last episode. Yes. We'll see you soon. Cheers, everybody. Thank you all. Ciao.